What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. And make sure you guys subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Today, I have a guest with me. He's gonna tell us all about the wonderful world of uh, physical therapy, kind of a typical uh, day in the life, uh, what it requires to become a physical therapist, and some advice for everyone out there that's interested in either physical therapy or applying to medical school. I want to welcome Dr. Yar Zinbo. Z <laughs> Dr. Yar Zinbo. Dr. <laughs> yeah, thank you for coming on, Dr. Y. Um, yeah, tell us about yourself. Well, thanks for the invitation. I'm glad to be here. I've been a physical therapist for seven years, uh, working primarily in the field of outpatient orthopedics. I grew up in Northeast Pennsylvania and mainly practiced there. Uh, the first three years of my career, and now I'm working down in the Florida Panhandle. Okay, awesome. And what made you, um, why were you interested in the physical therapy? What made you go into it? Well, I think like a lot of physical therapists, they um, usually start off by saying they had some kind of injury at some point, and that was the case for me. I was my senior year of football and I had a knee injury on the field and uh, went to see my doctor who then referred me to physical therapy, which I didn't know much of it, about at the time. And I went there and found it so fascinating uh, how the physical therapist interacted with the patient, the patients. And um, really there was this bond, I think that was formed between the patients I saw around me and the therapists that were working with them, which was really attractive to me mm -hmm. and how the patient really just put their full trust in the therapist uh, with these severe and quite frankly debilitating conditions. So for me going through it myself and seeing the direct benefits of physical therapy and also seeing patients around me going through their rehabilitation, it became a really attractive choice for me. Okay. Um, what, for the people who don't know what a physical therapist is, can you just explain, kind of break it down in layman's terms? What is a physical therapist? Essentially, a physical therapist is a person who identifies the cause of and management of musculoskeletal or any other systems that prevent normal daily living so mostly it's physical causes and that can be from any system of the body uh, for me it's patients mainly that have musculoskeletal challenges but physical therapists can work in settings that patients have challenges with their cardiopulmonary system which disallows them from being able to walk a certain distance um, so essentially a physical therapist helps patients to recover their physical mobility. Gotcha. And what is the schooling required? Um, I, I did a little bit of reading. I know it requires a bachelor's degree, but what are some other requirements before someone can apply to physical therapy school? Well, the American Physical Therapy Association had set a vision out, I think it was probably within the last 10 to 15 years, that all physical therapists would become uh, doctors of physical therapy in order to allow for more autonomous practice, uh, essentially meaning that physical therapists would be able to identify conditions that required escalation to um, care providers that was outside of a physical therapist scope of practice. So it used to be that physical therapists only required a bachelor's degree, but now most programs are moving towards a doctorate degree. Mm -hmm. So a high school student would need to take their SATs um, or ACTs and go to a four-year school, usually a pre-physical therapy um, track. Uh, there's a lot of different tracks, but usually four years of undergrad followed by taking your GREs and then applying to physical therapy grad school, which is usually about three years. So a total of seven years um, and you would receive your bachelor's uh, undergrad bachelor's degree and then your um, doctorate of physical therapy. Okay. 
And I know it was seven years ago, it was a long time ago, but <laughs> <laughs> how was physical therapy school for you? Um, are the first two years kind of similar to nursing school or medical school where you take a lot of preclinical classes? Is that how physical therapy school is? Essentially, it's set up very similarly. There are system-based courses. So, for example, my first uh, year or two, I had taken courses that were named cardiopulmonary 1, cardiopulmonary 2, integumentary 1, integumentary 2. And you're essentially learning these uh, courses uh, by understanding the pathophysiology of the sis at a systems level. So you might learn something about, for example, um, a meniscus tear and how to diagnose a meniscus tear. Uh, and then you would learn physical therapy-based treatments for that diagnosis. Um, and then as you progress through the more uh, didactic learning, you get into clinical settings where you'll do some rotations that might be two weeks long or four weeks long in a variety of settings. And then you'll do some longer clinical rotations that could be as long as eight or 16 weeks. Okay. So you have to have a bachelor's degree. You have to have the prerequisites depending on the school that you apply to. And then physical therapy school is three years. Well, yes. Okay. You come out with a doctor of physical therapist, therapy. And what is a typical salary once someone finishes your training? I know it depends on where you work. And, but what is a, kind of like an average salary for a physical therapist? Yeah, certainly it depends on a number of factors. But I think that I've read that about 80000 per year and make upwards of 100000 per year. Okay. And what is the typical day for you? It kind of starts at what time and ends at what time? I understand you. So as a physical therapist, you can work in different specialties like neurosurgery or um, orthopedic surgery. Uh, you, you're currently an orthopedic physical therapist. What is a typical day for you? Yeah, that's one of the terrific aspects of the profession is the scope of physical therapy practice. So physical therapists hold skill sets which enable them to work in a broad range of settings, as you mentioned, uh, inpatient, outpatient, home, even school-based settings. Um, for instance, in a given day, a physical therapist can see patients that need critical care in a short stay hospital in the morning and then in the afternoon they can work with patients that have congenital or developmental irregularities in a school-based setting. Um, but you know, with that being said, I, I work in a private practice clinic and I typically see patients with complaints of musculoskeletal challenges such as low back pain, uh, knee pain, shoulder pain, neck pain. Uh, in this setting, uh, physical therapists are responsible for identifying the cause of the problem and developing a plan of care. So uh, my day would typically start at 8 o'clock in the morning and I'd come in and I would have a schedule already built out, uh, some of which are new patients, some of which are follow-up patients. And if it's a new patient, I'm taking a thorough history and physical examination uh, in a private treatment room similar to a doctor's office with a treatment table and a desk and chairs and um, the interventions that I'm doing with the patients are patient driven with the aim of minimizing dependence on the clinician uh, to allow the patients to self-manage their musculoskeletal disorder. Depending on the patient's needs and the condition complexity, I'll usually see the patient a few times to ensure the management strategy is effective. Uh, I will see anywhere from two to three patients per hour or a total of 15 to 25 patients per eight hour day. So it's a pretty busy day. <laughs> okay, and do you have to take call at all as a physical therapist? Um, in some settings, there is a call per se. Uh, I also have worked over the last seven years as a per diem home health physical therapist. So if I work, say, eight to five at my outpatient clinic, I might have a patient that I would drive to on my way home and stop and see that patient in their home. And oftentimes in a home health setting, they'll ask the patient to be on call for example, if a patient had just come out of the hospital having had a total knee replacement, they would want the therapist to be there that day when the patient gets home to initiate some physical therapy-based intervention. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Awesome. And I understand that you are currently applying to medical school. Uh, why the transition from physical therapy to medicine or to become a, a uh, physician? Sure. Uh, well, you know, I think I'd always come across this point as a physical therapist that I absolutely love working with patients and I love the field of orthopedic physical therapy and I always wanted to do more for the patient and there were times where I was assessing and uh, managing patients and found that their condition was in, wasn't in the scope of physical therapy practice. Perhaps I saw a patient that was referred directly to me or hadn't seen a physician yet and had a fracture. Uh, and I, I wanted to be able to manage that patient. I wanted to be able to be the person that identified that problem and was able to help treat them. Uh, and I found myself coming back to that. Uh, so for me, it was that I really wanted to be able to do more for the patient. Gotcha. And after applying to physical therapy school and then currently applying to medical school, what kind of advice would you give to someone interested in a field of physical therapy or if they are interested in applying to medical school, either currently or coming up in the future? Sure. What, one thing I think is you need to find a mentor, and a physical therapists are very amenable to taking on students, and uh, especially high school students who are interested in the field of physical therapy. And I think that students who are interested in physical therapy need to consider a lot of factors when they're deciding if physical therapy is the right career for them. When they're choosing a mentor, they should consider the practice settings that they're looking at. So for example, they may view a physical therapist that works in a outpatient clinic. However, that's not that all that what physical therapists do. There are many different settings that physical therapists work in. And another thing that I think I wish I had done when I was observing physical therapists is observe many different physical therapists and the characteristics that they had, especially physical therapists that were new grads versus physical therapists that were experts in their field Mm -hmm. to get an idea of the stages uh, of how individuals are in the different parts of their career. (laughs) all right cool dr y i won't uh butcher your name anymore but i thank you (laughs) for uh coming on and you know sharing your uh wisdom and advice for kind of aspiring physical therapists or even medical students out there uh three last questions for you i try to do this every one i interview uh what is your favorite food well, I'd have to say pizza. I love pizza. Um, it probably, I'm trying to make it a little bit healthier, but I, I love pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and what is your favorite thing to do kind of outside of your, your work as a physical therapist? Well, I love running. I spend a lot of time uh, running here in the neighborhood, and my wife and I like to go on hikes in uh, North Florida. There's a lot of really nice trails here. <laughs> okay. And you probably already answered my last question. I usually ask uh, if there was something outside of physical therapy, what would it be? And your probably answer is probably become a physician. Uh, yeah. yeah, certainly. I, I really, that, that, that's my vision of what I'd like to bring my career to in the future. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, thank you. Good luck to you. I'm pretty sure you'll do well. Um, and for everyone else out there, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday. Wednesday and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. You don't want to miss these videos.